that I could see. Anybody have anything? No. All right. Entertain a motion to accept the minutes of July 7, 2009. I move that we accept the minutes. Second. There's a, uh, second. Any dis other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I'm sorry, and who made the motion? Clark. Okay. Conklin. Okay. All right. Um, Next order of business is case 111-024-ZBA-09019-1. Public hearing um, on a special exception and or area variance from Robert Coulter to permit him to enlarge an existing one-car garage to a two-car garage at 3 Wentworth Street. Um, the applicant here? Yeah, the applicant's here and I can uh, do the planner summary. Yeah. Just for the record, uh, I am not a direct butter. I live one house away. Um, I don't come to the table with any agenda on this particular item, so if people don't have any objections, I will sit on this one. Mm. Go ahead and make a presentation and tell us what you're doing. I, I think he was waiting. I told him I would. Oh, okay. That's fine. Too. <laughs> he'll, he'll add anything That's if I'm missing anything. The petitioner, Robert Coulter, who's in the audience, is requesting a building setback variance. And it's in order to permit him to enlarge his existing one-car garage to a two-car garage. The current garage sits right on the property line, but the proposed expansion will maintain that setback line, so it will still be on the property line. It's not going to encroach onto the other property, but it will be larger. The current garage is 12 and a half feet by 24 and a half feet for a total of 306.25 square feet. And the proposed garage is proposed to be 16.17 feet by 38 feet to make it 614.46 square feet. The existing garage is detached from the house, but yet shares a roof. So there's a question as to do we consider this an existing garage an accessory structure or an attached structure. When I went out to look at it, it looks like it's attached. I mean, usually when you're detached, you're significantly detached, like five feet away or something. And this one, it, they're not sharing a wall, but they're sharing a roof, and it's really what I would consider as attached. The reason why we need to decide how we're going to view it is because detached accessory structures may be allowed in the required setback as a special exception. That's how the ordinance is written. However, if the garage is considered attached, then we need to do a building setback variance. So what I did in terms of advertising is I advertised both. I advertised a special exception and a variance because otherwise we'd be in violation of not advertising it. We can always delete one without any problem. Can you say that again, what the, the distinction is between the two? Um, yeah, maybe I can show it better with the drawing, but. Okay, you can see no, no. his... Your distinction about the ordinance oh. between the detached... Okay, and the if it's a detached accessory structure, yeah. then we allow you to be in your building setback area by special exception. So in other words, instead of being having to be 15 feet from the property line, you could be 10 or 5 feet if it's a detached accessory structure. Is there a 5-foot limit? You said you could be 10 or 5. Yeah, or... or, or Zero? Or whatever. I mean, it just says you can, you can be in the building setback, and it doesn't have a minimum or anything. Okay. But but the difference is that that's done by special exception, mm -hmm. versus if it's attached, then you need to get a variance. So it's a different set of criteria, and it's a, a different proof if you want. And the variance say. would be from the setback. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. So both require a 15 foot setback from your side li side property line, but it's just a matter of do we view it as a variance and use the variance criteria, or do we view it as a special exception, which um, you know then it's usually case by case and it leans more mm -hmm. in favor than the variance. It's a different set of criteria. But when I went out there, it really looks more what I would consider detached because because it, it shares the roof line. Um, in my experience, when you detach it, you detach from your main structure by five feet at least. You know, it's, it's like a storage shed. It's detached. It has its own roof and everything. 
Anyhow, I sent the request to the um, to the various departments, the, you know, the fire department, police department, highway department, etc., as listed, and no one has expressed any concern with the request. My my main concern was with the fire department. Were they concerned about the accessory structure being so close to the main structure? And um, they didn't have any concern with that. But what the petitioner is looking at doing anyhow is cleaning it up a bit so it will become more attached and it will have a cleaner roof line. The way it is now, it's it's just it's just sort of stuck there. It, it's it really could cause problems in terms of drainage, the way the water flows and, and molding and it's it just wasn't done the right way. In my opinion. Um, in terms of my recommendation, if the Zoning Board of Adjustment determines that the request meets the variance criteria, then they can make a motion that grants the following variance. So it would be a variance from Article 3, Section 304, building setback from 15 feet to 0 feet, because they're right on the property line. Oh, and that was the other thing I asked the fire department about building separation, because if he's right on the property line, then is he making the other building uh, more susceptible to fire, but the the fire chief was not concerned about that. He feels there's enough separation. Uh, may I ask you a question? Sure. Uh, the attachment between the two buildings isn't visible on the photograph, I don't think, unless is it that corner that's just like attached to the house, or is yeah, it's. Yeah, like like that sort of attached. That yeah. Just I, that I mean that's corner. what I'm saying. I mean it's not like you can actually walk between them or anything. They're touching and. You can't walk between them. No. Okay. Right. And the, and the and the roof is somehow attached to the house up here. Yeah. Okay. All right, I understand. Yeah, I, I, you have to actually when you go and see it, you'll see that it's just. Mm -hmm. In terms of how it's draining, I, it's just going to create problems. It's a couple mess, is what yeah. it is. Yeah. Could you give us the dimensions again, the existing and the proposed? Sure. The existing is 12 and a half feet by 24 and a half feet. And that gives him 306.25 square feet. And the proposed, so it's basically going from a one car garage to a two car garage. The proposed is 16.17 feet by 38 oh, feet. Oh, it's right there. Oh, I'm sorry. So he, it gives him 614, so it it doubles the size. The two car is depth wise, not width wise, yeah. so it's a little. Uh, yeah. I mean, basically, I mean, what you have now. I keep the same footprints, it's just going deeper. Yeah. It's, it's not going on the line any wider than what it is now, it just goes right. deeper. He can't go wider, so. So it's sort of like the doors coming down to ground level and the. Garage is coming up to yes. the, the, where the door is. And it, the, it, takes, there. it takes that mudroom off of there and incorporates right. it all into one structure versus a cobble mess of two different structures and it cleans up the appearance of the house. Yeah. So you, pull, you would actually pull in the garage now and never have to be outside. You pull in the garage and then you'd be able to walk into the kitchen from there versus now where you pull in the garage, you come back outside and you have to go all the way around and back up into the house. Mm -hmm. And it's, I'm, I'm picking up a lot of drainage issues because the roof lines are all different, and so um, yeah. it's it's forcing the water back onto the house and it's trying to rot out the house. Mm -hmm. And he included a number of drawings, so you can see the existing and then how the proposed would be with the dash lines. Mm -hmm. And then he also has the existing, the front and the rear, and then his proposed. His proposed shows how he cleans up the roof line. It sounds to me like maybe the first question is whether this is uh, attached or not. <clears throat> I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, it's attached only, I mean, it's, right now it's attached only in kind of in one small little section of, of the roof. Uh, it's thing. actually attached, the whole length of the garage is actually attached to the house. Well, half the garage is attached to the house. 
right now. And then the mud room is attached to the garage and that roof. It's it's tough. It's really tough to explain until you yeah, see. Yeah, you, you have to really go out there and see it, and then you're like, oh. But but as, as you said, there, there's no opening between, let's say, a rear door in the garage and the house. There is a you, door in the garage that goes out into this kind of dead zone area between the house and the garage. Right. Yes. Yeah. And there's a roof that's over that that attaches to the garage and the house. And then the mud room that you see on the front attaches to that roof and the garage. <laughs> well, you know, another way to look at it is the yeah. proposal. The proposal is obviously going to be attached. Right. So. The proposal is to get rid of all that and make yeah. one structure that's attached to the house the way it should have been. Could you come up here and just uh, look at this plan with me? When is this are you showing the existing? Yes, this is the existing garage right now. There's a oh. dead space mm -hmm. right through here, and there's a roof line that goes across there that attaches to the house from about here and goes the length oh. of the garage. And the mud room sits right here. Can and I? It's attached. Was was this building was built separately, and then the roof was uh, appears to have been put on maybe to make the water go not between them or something? Is it? I would probably say that's correct. Um, it's tied into it now, but initially, the, I, I put the age of the garage about 1950. And that looks like the style. Of the, you know, the style of the building was probably around the 50s. When they, when this was put in, I don't know. I think they probably did that because they had drainage issues before because the, the roof line was running back in the house. They put a flat roof across there, and that just piles up with snow and ice. So it's and flat. Yeah. Between the two buildings. Yeah. And then they then they cobbled on this mud room, and I I don't know when the mud room got put on, but they put a mud room on it, which then attached it to the garage and that roof. Mm -hmm. So, then it's attached to the house. My may I? Yeah, I'm um, expressing an opinion. <laughs> yes, please. I feel like th these were built as two separate buildings, and that 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 it sounds to me like that roof or that that attachment was put on there to. Maybe fix the drainage or to alleviate other problems that they had, but this looks to me like it is not really attached in the usual sense that it was constructed as a single unified building. It's it, I, it sounds to me like it's really a detached thing with a little connecting roof on it or something. So I would be in favor, first of all, I think, of treating this as a detached building and going ahead with the special exception route, I think. But I think, but I think the distinction is that when it becomes an attached structure, then it needs to meet the setbacks. Then the variance is necessary. Right, and if and I think, I think it's more like a detached accessory structure that uh, should be subject to the special exception rules and not the variance rules. Did I answer your question? Well, no, because the proposal. Yeah. I mean, this one's going to be attached. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. But aren't we concerned in the first instance with what we're dealing with? But I, th I think that was Dick's point that w instead of looking at what right. we're dealing with, look at what the final product's going to be. Because this one, yeah, you could say it's it was accessory structure. But if he wants to build another accessory structure, then we could do it that way. But if so, the, the so. I'm glad I asked this because now, uh, this is a little different than what I was saying. You're thinking, uh, what are we doing, not what do we have? Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think. I mean, I look at it from the perspective of, as you just said, of what what the end product is, which is an attached structure, which then needs to meet the setbacks. But I think sort of the the key piece of information I look at is that mm -hmm. the proposed structure, none none of the faces of the proposed structure are going to be any closer to the existing lot line or to, to the lot line than the existing structure. I mean, he's not expanding. It's getting... It's getting longer. It's getting a little bit longer. It's not going back, wider. But, but that same offset, which is basically zero, right. is being maintained for a very short distance. Um, you know, it's coming a little bit closer to the street, but it's not coming any closer to the street than, okay, so, yeah. than, than the face of the existing house. But it, the, 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 new, the garage will come to the existing face of where the mud room is. It doesn't go past anything that it is now. It's, it's just, like I said, it's getting rid of all the cobble mess and building one clean structure. But I think your point is we, we need to deal with it as a variance because we're building a 
Um, yeah. Cash. Okay. Yep. I understand. I agree. Okay. Well, it looks like it's coming about four. It's going back four feet more than it is now. Yes. Plus or minus in about ten feet on the front. Yes, it's coming up to where the existing mud room is now. If you see the the, the current picture, it's to the face of that. Yeah. It doesn't go past that face. Which it, the mud room sat about two feet back from the edge of the house. What's that? It might be tough to see in those because it's all white trim now. Yeah. But yeah. It, the white trim would still be exposed. Yeah. Any other questions? Have you, um, the abutter on the, uh, you know, the affected side, I guess. Yeah, Roger and Susan Blake, I've talked to them. They're okay with it? They were okay with it as long as I did, wasn't going any farther since I was keeping the, mm -hmm. the same line. They didn't care. I'm realizing I forgot to appoint a yeah. alternate to vote on this. So Robin will vote on this. Okay. <laughs> I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. Good. Um, Neil, do you have any questions? Or? <clears throat> no, it's just my observation. I I believe that the uh, the design of the house didn't include this garage originally and the mudroom was probably added after the garage but it's all attached hey, the house was built in 1905 they probably didn't have cars Had very narrow stairways. Yeah. <laughs> Bill, anything? No. Okay. Robin, anything? No. Okay. Miriam, do you have anything to add? No. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience who has a question, comment, concern? Well, I'm Frank Miller. I stand in support of this application for the variance. I think this would, first of all, this new construction would be in compliance with the new building codes we use in the town. Uh, I believe it would enhance the value of the house, maintain the character of that neighborhood, and I believe would solve a uh, problem of safety and livability in that house. I think uh, we should uh, approve the variance. Tim, anything? Uh, Tim Daniel, a neighbor, budding neighbor, I think of an enhanced neighborhood. I think it's a great idea. Um, it probably was a detached garage at one point because most houses through that neighborhood are all single car garages offset. This just happens to be offset. Uh, the neighbor's house is offset to the back. Uh, I used to have one offset to the back. Uh, very typical for the neighborhood, single car. I think that roof line was added to keep the water from running back into the house, and they tried to direct it to the back, back swale area. I think it's a great enhancement on the drainage. Uh, and again, the enhancement for the neighborhood, and we're in support of it. Also, it's not any more non conforming into the. Uh, it's not any less non conforming either, but it's not. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and encroaching upon that neighbor and that, and that component. Thanks. Thank you. Anything else from the board? All right. Close the public hearing and start talking about some of the variance criteria. Um, let's go through a couple findings first. Um, Bill's been running feverishly over here. No. Oh, darn. Um, I guess one that I've sort of already indicated that comes to my mind is that the proposed structure will not be um, 
any closer to the lot lines than the existing structure. Thoughts, ideas for findings? We'll enlarge this space from 306 to 614 square feet. You don't have to stay there if you don't I'll want to. to. <laughs> okay. I didn't know if there any questions for me. We'll assist the property owner in getting rid of a lot of the drainage problems. The butter is spoken in favor of it. Yep. I suppose it's worth noting that no one spoke against it. All right, so we have no close to the lot lines and existing. We'll enlarge the space uh, with the dimensions, uh, square footage as indicated. We'll assist the property owner in dealing with drainage problems. When a butter spoke in favor, no butter spoke against. I, I think it's probably worth noting that, uh, sort of on the negative side, that the extent of the uh, non conformance is going to be increased by the additional length of the garage. So, if the set, is the setback 15 feet? Right. So, and now, and right now we're, you know, we're a lot like 15 by 24, we're encroaching onto that. And it's going to be 15 by 38, so it's going to be a greater um, non compliance, I guess, than it is now. So, what the footprint of the Kind of sort of sum that into a sentence. I um, can't do that. Okay. <laughs> well, I, 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 um, the extent of the encroachment onto the setback area will uh, be increased by approximately. Uh, 200 square feet, something like that. I think it would be. Um, 13 and a half feet by 15, right? Whatever that is. Yeah, it's about uh, 200. Okay. By my calculation. Okay. Robin, anything? I don't think you've said it all. I think it will enhance the neighborhood. All right, so we've got seven findings there. Again, no closer to the lot lines than the existing structure. We'll enlarge the space. Uh, we'll assist the property owner in dealing with drainage issues. One a butter spoke in favor, no butter spoke against. Extent of the encroachment uh, in the setback will increase by approximately 200 square feet and will enhance the neighborhood. All right, if there are no other findings that anyone wishes to add, let's take a look at the criteria. Number one, the variance will not be contrary to the public interest. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Number two. Um, go to page oh, yeah. one. Flip the page back, yes. Granting the variance will not diminish the value of surrounding properties, true or false. True, true, true. That's true. true. It's, um, number two, the variance will not be contrary to the public interest. True. 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 Mm -hmm. Denial of the variance would result in unnecessary hardship to the applicant upon proof that A, the zoning restriction as applied to the applicant's property interferes with the applicant's reasonable use of the property considering the unique setting of the property in its environment. True or false? True. I'm going to say true. 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 Um, no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general purposes of the zoning ordinance and the specific restrictions on the property. True or false? 
True. 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 Everybody true. Mm -hmm. um, the variance would not injure the rights, injure the public or private rights of others. True. 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 Granting the variance would do substantial justice. True. true. True all around, and the use will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the ordinance. Also true. true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Would anyone like to make a motion on this to approve? I'll move that we uh, grant the variance, as uh, Miriam described it, from the uh, setback requirement of Article 3, Section 304, I think it is. Correct. Uh, for the length of this garage, as uh, shown on the plan, from 15 feet to zero feet, and to permit uh, Mr. Coulter to, is it Coulter, to um, build the garage as it's shown on the plan. Okay. All right, that's a motion by Mike. Is there a second? I'll second that. And Bill Clark second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? You're all set. That's what they should have done in the first place. Have a good night. I get one question. Yeah. Who, who did the sketch of the proposed? <laughs> 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 nice work. Not, not I personally, but uh, someone with an, ar an architect within our office. Okay, great. Looks, looks good. All right. Moving on to second case. 213-002-ZBA-090109-2, public hearing um, on an area variance from Kevin French representing Michael McGinley to permit a parking setback variance from 15 to 5 feet and a building setback from 30 to 15, property located corner of Tenney Mountain Highway, Boulder Drive, the ICD zone. Just for the record, I met with the, uh, the town planner and Mr. French and Mr. McGinley on this a couple of weeks ago. Basically, I, what I anticipate is that they will explain to the board the same things they explained to me. Um, and basically, it was just kind of a learning session for me just so I could understand what the issues are since there are some, at least in my opinion, some, some special issues here that um, will be discussed, okay. I think, both by the applicant and oh, his engineer. Yeah. Um, okay, this is I don't, I don't, I don't feel that the meeting yeah. okay. prejudiced any discussions, any of my discussion okay. on this. Thanks. If the Thanks. board feels otherwise, I will continue to sit on this. Um, and I will appoint Freeman to vote on this. These are just copies of the intersection plan if anybody's interested. Um, basically, what we're looking for is uh, at the present time, this. This is where Boulder Point Drive comes out and intersects with Tenney Mountain Highway. Uh, the, in order for, at this time, because of the traffic that is presently on Boulder Point Drive, DOT has stated that no more development can take place on that road until an, a signalized intersection is placed down at this intersection. In order to do that, this road has to be realigned with the driveway across the street. Um, and what we are proposing is to actually widen the right of way of Boulder Point Drive by some 42 feet easterly to accommodate the realignment of this so that it will align with the driveway across the street so that a signal can be placed at that intersect. Uh, Mr. McGinley, who owns this corner lot, is going to, this is this is a little over a tenth of an acre of land which he will be deeding to the town to widen this uh, right of way because presently Boulder Point Drive is a town road and a town owned road. So this section will be added to that. He is also um, putting the bill for the new signalized intersection. 
And what we're asking for today is presently the requirement for setbacks is 30 feet on from Tenney Mountain Highway and from Boulder Point Drive as a frontline setback. Uh, it's a 15 foot setback for parking. <clears throat> what we are asking for is because he has to lose 42 feet of this frontage, in order to preserve, obviously, the Tenney Mountain Highway frontage is the most valuable part of this lot. So in order to pre preserve as much of this building area as possible, what we are asking for is a variance of um, from 30 feet down to 15 feet for the building setback and from 15 feet down to 5 feet for the parking setback along Boulder Point Drive. The setback along Tenney Mountain Highway would remain as it is 30 for building and 15 for, um, 15 for parking. And uh, I've gone through the, which I think you have a copy of, I've gone through the variance requests. I can read them if you want or if uh, you just want to maybe summarize them. Sure. Um, the, basically the first one is to explain how granting of the variance will not diminish the value of the surrounding properties. Um, I think we could make a pretty good argument for the fact that since none of no development can take place on the rest of these lots, it will actually greatly enhance the value of the surrounding properties by accommodating the relocation of the road and the signalization of that intersection. Uh, and again, this is a, this is a request that it, this, well, it's a requirement not a request, I guess. It's a requirement from DOT. Um, and it is, isn't contrary to the public interest uh, and because basically the realignment and the signalization is, a, is strictly a safety issue. Um, it's obviously a traffic management as well, but the biggest issue was, was one of safety and the fact that this would be getting too much, too much traffic coming out onto that road. Uh, the uh, says how the variance would result in unnecessary hardship. Basically, this is the only only lot that can accommodate this realignment. The only other thing that would happen is the problem across the street is that obviously these lots are already developed, the buildings are already in, and the infrastructure is already there. So it would be much more cost prohibitive and. Um, Physically, it's a little more difficult because it, it, this side of the ro road slopes down so much, and this this is a, a better grade getting to the road. So, the physical features of this lot make it really the only one that can accommodate this realignment. Uh, again, it would granting the variance would do su substantial justice um, because it does allow. Uh, the owner to retain as much of the buildable area and usable area of this frontage as he can while still accommodating this uh, change for the realignment. Um, it isn't contrary to the spirit of the ordinance because we would still be maintaining the, all the setbacks off of Tenney Mountain Highway, and, which is the primary road, and Boulder Point Drive is really the secondary road. And, and, if this was not a road and it was a sideline, it would have a 15-foot building setback anyway. And most of the most of the um, uses, particularly in this area along Tenney Mountain Highway, the parking areas actually extend uh, up to the edge of the right-of-way anyway. So we would, this lot would still maintain a much further setback from Tenney Mountain Highway. Uh, so it would be in keeping with the spirit of the of the setback ordinance. Questions? Um, Kevin, can you uh, look at this plan? Mm -hmm. Are those? Is that red line? Okay. This show? is this is the present. This dark line right here is the present edge of the right of way. Yeah. Okay. This is actually where the this yellow line is where the pavement. It would extend out. This magenta line is the new proposed, yeah. which removes it down 42 feet. 
This is the this is the 30 foot setback off of Penny Mountain Highway, and this would be the proposed 15 foot setback for building, and this would be the proposed five foot setback for parking. And and uh, one other thing, or a couple other things to, that are worth mentioning, of course. Any development that goes on this lot will has to go through site plan review anyway, and, and you know so that will come back before the planning board. And one of the reasons that we're here now with this is because they do have people that are looking at this lot, and they really basically want to know what area they're going to have to work with, and what are the what are those parameters going to be. I'm just thinking out loud here, and the last time I did that, I got in trouble at the beginning of the last one, but uh, <laughs> um, you can't uh, obviously park and build, so I'm just wondering, I guess somebody's going to come and do a layout there, and they're either going to have a building up 15 feet from the edge of the road, or a parking, I guess, or whatever, right? right, and actually that's a good point. It, 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 Again, we're trying to. What we're trying to do is really um, preserve as much of the envelope as we can. And when it comes in for site plan review, in all likelihood, it will be one or the other. It will either be the parking that is up there or the building that will be. And if we had someone that was here now, we could tell that. Um, and we we want. Another reason that we're, we're here now with this is because, uh, you know, one of the realities of the thing is that this, there, there is a mortgage on that lot now, and the mortgage holder wants to know what they're going to be left with when they give the release for this section of it. So um, that's just one of, the, one of the entities that we have to. Uh, Kevin, what's the. Uh, I, I'm just thinking that if you go down past Walmart, the the dollar store and mm -hmm. the tire store are yep. both built way back mm -hmm. off the road and have their, all their parking in front. And mm -hmm. is, the, is the back of this, um, sort of um, stuff. is it developable or is it? Is yeah, it, uh, and, and it, um, the, it the, a little difference just in those two is on the, it, like particularly the dollar store, there was a wet area that came down in the front of it. And that's mm -hmm. one of the things that kind of pushed it up back. In this lot, the, the, the nicest part of the lot, if you will, is the splat part that comes in, and then as you go up, the grade increases. So it's, this is the best development potential part of the lot. Uh, so we want to try to preserve as much of that as we can while still accommodating the, the signalization. I guess, would there be any development on the, was it the, Southerly side of the lot, the back portion. Uh, there may be, and and again, this is a this is a uh, look. It's about a 2.4 acre lot, um, so it'll still be, like I said, this is this is going to be about a little over a tenth of an acre of land, um, so it'll still be a two plus acre lot, and hopefully um, that whatever goes on here will will take will. Uh, you know, take maximum use of the law. I mean, I'm, it's, I'm, I'm quite in favor of maximizing the commercial use of commercial lots if you can. So, well, I guess I mean, could, could this lot be subdivided? Technically speaking, it could be. Uh, I think there's enough area. I don't think that that isn't anything that that we've come across. But it's you know, it does have the frontage. It does have. You know, that's a half acre min minimum zone, and 100 feet of frontage is the minimum. So theoretically, it could be. There aren't any plans for that. And to be quite honest, you know, the, most of the, the users that are looking at that are, are things that would require most of the lot anyway. Gee, I was sort of looking at it the other way. Since it's, it's over two acres, I think you could probably get development and still meet the original setbacks, but they want to have the variance just so that they can show that even though they're losing uh, a significant portion of their lot, they're, they're not going to be giving up that setback also. <clears throat> but with that going over two acres, they, they could conceivably still meet setbacks. 
But conceivably, you could. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean it's, it's plenty. It's not like a tight lot. It's it's got a lot of room to it so, for most developments. I mean, I guess uh, I guess sort of the one thought that's just kind of coming into my mind is that this kind of this this area that you're going to be adding to the right of way. Um, is the area that's kind of critical to the variance request. Mm -hmm. But if this lot was subdivided, and the back portion, which is, as someone said, kind of a steep slope right now, was subdivided, and you, you know, you, you, you show kind of a building, envelope, building and construction envelope, um, you know, if just south of that envelope line you created a new lot line, Sort of that new lot would need to have the variance. Thank you. You've lost I mean, me, Dick. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I think as you as you move farther into the lot, you yeah. get away from where this change in the right of way is taking place. Right. So the question, I mean, it seems like the question. It, it seems like as you move farther into the lot, and you maybe get into an area where you could have a new lot, mm -hmm. that you shouldn't have the same. Variance forgiveness. Uh, are you proposing that, that that variance extend from down here all the way to the? No, no. Actually, one of the points about that is, and again, we're not looking to subdivide the lot, but this where Boulder Point Road would stay the same, yeah. where the right of way is, would stay the same. There is a this line here is a an existing 20 foot slope easement that went that goes with Boulder Point Road. And that's actually part of the the, the, um, the, deed. in the deeds to the road. This slope easement goes with it. So basically, from this area right here, which is the end of my proposed development yeah. area, they wouldn't be going into that anyway because that's already in the slope easement. Wouldn't you need the slope easement to extend 20 feet from? Well, you don't really need it down here because there, this is down where it's flat and there isn't the slope. This was basically because as you go up through here, as you know, there's quite a cut, and the and the drainage um, ditches and structures that were placed, those cut slopes extended beyond the right of way, and then when we get that, they they just ran it because when Brian Young actually got those easements from, from the owners, and when he got the easement, Mr. McGinley gave him the easement for this, he gave it to him through the whole lot. So, uh, and, but now it exists, that right of that easement would really be in the land that's, that the town is in that triangle <coughs> piece. Um, but again, it's only, it was only really needed for slope up here because when you get down here it's it's just isn't that flat. parallel line you drew on there just to show where the end of the uh, easement would, yeah, would stop pardon me the parallel line to the ten mountain highway there that right here yeah yeah basically that's where it came that's to. not a little that's not a subdivision line no no yeah. no i just did this i showed this as a proposed because they said show a proposed building envelope mm -hmm. so i did that was I wasn't meaning to infer a subdivision or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, well, did I interrupt you before? Or did, did you get your question answered? When? Yes. Yeah. No. I, I think. Yeah. Can I ask you another one though? It is um, you didn't show the setback up uh, past here. That's correct. And is it your expectation that the variance would extend to the, the southerly end of the magenta line? Yeah, actually, it would, my my. Or to to where it's shown. It, it would it would extend to where it intersected that existing this existed existing twenty foot um, setback. Okay. I, or easement. Sorry, the existing twenty foot easement. I see. Because you can't we can't build in that easement anyway. So basically, it's coming to the corner of that right. envelope you created. Right. Yeah. And that's ba that is that's why I ended it at that point. Yeah. So uh, so we're talking about the area from here to here. That's correct. Right. Does this increase the lot size on the other side? That makes Does this increase the lot size on the other side, the Quimby lot? Uh, no, because actually, what what's will happen? The only thing it will do is it'll increase the area of the right of way. Okay. Because the other side, because of the fact that the drainage and everything is in there, that will remain 
as town right of way. So basically, instead of it being a 50 foot uh, wide parcel of land that the town owns, it, in this area it would widen out to, uh, would be 92 feet along the road. And they would get that triangular uh, tenth of an acre. And and actually, that would, that's necessary anyway, because when they get done with the, the realignment and the approaches and things like that, the pavement really extends beyond 50 feet anyway. So. Anything else, Mike? I don't think so. Neil, do you have anything? No, well, fine. actually, okay. I'm sorry, but okay, yeah, um, have you... It seems to me this is a little unusual in the sense that you're asking for a variance before there's a use for it, you know, mm -hmm. or a purpose. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering whether, um, if you, if I understand what your what your issue is, and that is that you're marketing the property, I think, or you got mm -hmm. somebody interested and they want to know what they can do and what they can't do. But I wonder if if somebody went in there and designed something, maybe they'd want a variance somewhere else, or maybe. You know, I just wonder if if um, if this is a little premature and um, um, it if somebody wanted a variant somewhere else, then I guess they could come back at any time and ask for one. And and the the, the fact is that, like I said before, in all likelihood, um, both variances won't. It'll be one or the other. Um, and and again, maybe neither. Uh, um, but basically what we're trying to do is because, uh, you know, we're trying to preserve as much value in the lot as we can because he's losing value by right. um, giving this up and plus the ticket of putting the light in is a substantial number. And, and that's the approach why we said do an envelope. So that <coughs> Because we don't know where the building's going to go. So we right. have an envelope. So it's a parking envelope and a building envelope, and it would go somewhere in there. I mean, that's right. the whole intent. Right. And what is it on? It's 15 on this side, I see. It's 15. It's 15 on the side and the back. And, and we know that the entry to this lot is, is not going to be from down here. That's it's right. Be from over here. Right. In all and likelihood. In all likelihood, the entrance for this lot will be somewhere in here. Mm -hmm. so it'll have to be up near the apex of this curve so you can get visibility both ways. And plus, there would, there would be um, this, obviously, the, a stacking issue for traffic here. So it's going to be somewhere in this area. So the failure to approve the, the um, variance would effectively shut down all development on, well, ten, and on Boulder Drive? Uh, well, it is it is a critical component in getting this going. I mean, I, that's uh, because the DOT requires the light. What's that? Because the DOT requires the right. light. Right, right, right. And they and they've been pretty specific that, uh, in fact, the uh, the connection that's into Walmart can be ungated until this is until that light is put in. Which is kind of a catch-22 because the planning board's approval of that said it had to be in. So it's kind of a, mm -hmm. it's a. Uh, Kevin, can I just um, now when you actually build the road here or widen the road, I said it's mm -hmm. going to that light. This is going to be used right up to that blue line, I, I gather, pretty much, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. where the traffic's going to go, and it'll be maybe there'll be nothing over on this 30 feet. Right? Well, yeah, this will come over a little bit. Actually, and it, may, it shows on those other plans, but they're actually, when the road is, when the light is put in, it's actually going to be widening on this side, and it's going to be a turning lane put in here. Mm -hmm. So this will come out. I see. That's why I say wide, uh, this, this throw area would, this area in here, the pavement actually will extend beyond the 50 feet right of way that presently exists anyway. Now I know you've already given this some thought because you told us you did, but on the, the property across the street, um, it seems to me that if it, were, if, if it were moved over there, and I don't know what would be involved, but it would not, it, it would not take any land from anybody, it would move it, right? It wouldn't really... Well, t well right now this is, this is presently two separate 
Probably should show it here. This is two this is separate owner right. shifts. Right now, this line, the vision line, comes down the road and runs oh, okay. between those two buildings. Well, that complicates things. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't think I have anything else. Bill, anything? What's the frontage for this lot? This lot has 215 <coughs> frontage. On. On Tenny Mountain High. Okay. Is Tenny Mountain the, considered the frontage then? Um, or is it Boulder Point? Well, technically speaking, in the regulations, it says when you front on two roads, yeah. you use both roads. So, um, as a practical matter, Tenny Mountain. if you had to maintain a, a setback, Personally, I think it would make more sense to maintain the Tenney Mountain Highway setback because that, in all likelihood, would be the road that was widened if there was ever a widening, as opposed to, you know, Boulder Point yeah. Drive yeah. has a specific number that, I mean, it's probably not going to connect through to much. Yeah. All right. Um, Miriam, anything to add? We did get a communication from in a butter. Should I save that for the public hearing part, or? Um, I think we're about there now. So why don't you go ahead and? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, we got a communication from Brian Young. He said, Miriam, I, I may not be able to attend the meeting. However, I am in agreement with the variances at Boulder Point Drive that will be discussed tonight. Brian Young, who owns the property up t up south. Boulder Point Drive, the top. He's, he's the guy getting the light. <laughs> <laughs> no offense, Brian. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, anything else from the board? Do you have anything there? No, sir. Thank you. Okay. Well, uh, Frank Miller, and I stand in support of granting this variance. Uh, this is a critical piece of property. As part of our uh, commercial development, and given the uh, uniqueness of the situation of having this landowner having to give up some of his property to allow the intersection to be signalized, to allow the appropriate development uh, up Boulder Point Drive, um, I think is in the public interest of the people of the town of Plymouth, and. Uh, I think this is a uh, worthy uh, value to grant a variance for the setback, uh, including for either parking or building. Thank you. Anything else from the board? Miriam? No, I All have set? no more comments. Yep. You all set, Kevin? Yeah. I'm okay. All right, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the board for discussion findings. Um, who wants to go first? <clears throat> well, I think we could say for one thing that we I, I would conclude from what we've been told that it's necessary for the uh, for the town to acquire that triangle of land in order to um, get these signals put in. So that seems like it's pretty much of a given. Yeah. And it increases the safety on Tamar Highway. Setbacks on Tenny Mountain Highway remain the same. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, what Kevin explained is that the um, area that they're requesting be subjected to this variance is that which extends, I'm going to have difficulty describing it, but from the, uh, I guess, the southerly line of the 30 foot 
Tenney Mountain set back a distance of approximately blank feet <laughs> to um, the point at which a 15 foot setback would intersect the um, slope easement, right? Correct. Now, can you tell us, you've got your ruler, right? I don't know. It's one right oh, here. I brought a scale. Okay. Well, I was just, do you know what that, what, what that distance is there? That approximately? distance would be I can't about 100, 150 feet. So that blank was approximately 150 feet. That, that line, okay. That, the, 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 the line to which the variance would apply or the, the boundary, le the length of the boundary to which the variance would apply is approximately 150 feet. Okay. And not to get too technical, but that would be the variance for the building setback. Oh yeah, right. Okay, the, the variance for the packing setback would, would only be about 100 feet because that line intersects that 20 foot the, slope easement. The slope yeah. easement more quickly. Right, yeah. yeah. I think we could say that we recognize that the, um, you know, the necessity of realigning that certainly impinges on a, a fairly significant portion of the frontage of that lot. So we're going from 30 to 15 and from 15, 15 to, to five. 5. So the setback is a 15 foot difference. So I was just kind of doing the the the, um, the math on that, and I th it's it, uh, you know I, I, my view of this is sort of like they're suggesting that we split the difference with them. You know, we get the 42 feet, and uh, you know give them back 15. So I guess. You know, the net result, the yep. way I look at it, is sort of like uh, they're losing 27 on the building element of it anyway. Granting the variance will allow for the signalization, which will allow for more industry or more mm -hmm. building going on. He'd be willing to split the cost of the signalization with you, too. <laughs> <laughs> You just talk to Brian about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a couple of us have uh, suggested that the giving the variance was necessary in order that the signalization be done. I don't think that's really the case because I don't know this, but I think that probably the applicant is going to go ahead with that whether he gets the variance or not. It's not that he needs the variance to do it. The variance would leave the lot more, you know, um, with without so much less value as it might otherwise. It won't suffer the diminution of value that it otherwise might, I guess. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, they still, like I said, the the in order for any development to go on, the, the intersection has to be signalized. So something would have to be done. It's just a question of trying to preserve as much of the lot or infringe on it as little as possible, however. Yeah. Uh, just lessen the hardship. Okay. I mean, I sort of view it, I mean, there's a little bit of a sort of a balancing act here, right. sort of, you know, giving something to get something. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. um yeah, I mean, I, and I think, I mean, it sort of ties in with some of the other findings that have been outlined so far, but I mean, clearly I think there's, you know, sort of the special conditions on this particular piece of property are that, as you pointed out in your application, it is the only lot on which this realignment can occur. I mean, it, yeah. it can't go across the street, it can't go to Plymouth Square, Inc., it can't go to Mr. Quinby next door. It, it has to go here. So um, there are some fairly unique circumstances at play. Mm. Now, if Mr. McGinley uh, were inclined to speak, he would probably say 
that uh, he's already suffering the entire cost of the signalization and he's um, sort of asking us to bear a little bit of the cost of the of uh, what he would otherwise have to give up in this lot as well. And I think the signals, I don't know what the signals cost, but it's a few hundred thousand dollars, I think. Has that work started yet? It's around three. Has it about 300? <coughs> Has it started yet? No, we're waiting for DOT and Congress to sign off on the plans. Hopefully start in the next six weeks and get it, get it done before the snow. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to like stopping twice down there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, I was sort of thinking and writing too much at the same time, but in summation, <laughs> the findings I have are um, you have a loss of land area by the applicant for the establishment of the new right of way, increased safety, setback on Teddy Mountain Highway remains the same. Um, Mike sort of outlined the fact that the area subject to the variance is that 150 foot area or sort of 150 foot line for the building setback or possibly 100 feet line for the parking setback um, uh, it's a requirement to um, have any additional development up on Tenney Mountain Highway to install the light uh, industrial growth for the community and uh, what's the variance I think that's about it. Sort of five. Any other findings from the board? Did I miss one, Marion? Marion? Um, well, I counted up six, but it seemed like you said them all. So I had six too, but <coughs> okay. I seem to repeat myself. So oh, okay, <laughs> we'll call it five and a half. Um, all right. Let's go through the criteria. Um, Number one, granting the variance will not diminish the value of the surrounding properties. Mm -hmm. True or false? True. True. Yes. Yes. Clearly true. Clearly true, because everyone will gain. Yeah. Um, the variance will not be contrary to the public interest. True or false? True. 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 Um, denial of the variance would result in unnecessary hardship to the applicant upon proof that the zoning restriction as applied to the applicant's property interferes with the applicant's reasonable use of the property, considering the unique setting of the property in its environment. True. True, true. true or false? Yep, we're going to say true on that. True. Uh, no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general purposes of the zoning ordinance and the specific restriction on the property. True or false? True. True. It's true. It's true. Um, the variance would not injure the public or private rights of others. True. That's true. 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 Granting the variance would do substantial justice. True. True. That's true. what this is all about. I see yep, true I think, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and would not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the ordinance. True. True. We're true. Say true on that. Anyone like to make a motion to approve this variance? I will make a motion that this variance be approved. Second. Any other discussion? So Freeman made the, the motion. Only, the only oh. Could I just the thing that I have is that not knowing what is going there and providing this so that the setbacks you may have building instead of parking, but could I just uh, supplement Freeman's motion by asking that we add the language in Miriam's recommendation, which cites the particular, uh, the two particular sections we're talking about and the extent of that variance. And I guess it should probably also say... Um, Maybe as shown. It should probably reference this plan yeah. and the lines that uh, Kevin has drawn on there. Okay, as shown in plan with lines as indicated, and I'll, I'll date. Is that really magenta? That's what they tell me. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I know, actually, that one's that's some type of blow. 
The magenta is the, isn't that the, the purple one? I thought it was more red. <clears throat> I'm going to call that blue okay. just for tonight. I actually, no, I'm sorry. I think that's cyan. Oh, cyan. <laughs> cyan. Okay. So, I was just, just going to say that. Okay. Okay. Sure. So it, maybe if we could say on there that it's um, the, the um, red setback lines that are shown adjacent to the cyan boundary line adjustment line. Actually, well, if you if you if I could make a suggestion, yes, um, if you worded it that it ran parallel, that they ran parallel with the new right of way line mm -hmm. from uh, Tenney Mountain Highway from the Tenney Mountain Highway setback until they intersected the existing slope easement of Golden yeah. Point Drive, that would. That would, in fact, be. I like what it that. Is. And that. And that represents the 150 line and the approximately 100 line. That right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 I I want to stay away from the colors because yeah. we, we can't afford <laughs> yeah, to color it. I mean, to yeah. copy it in color, we're going to copy yeah. it in black and white. So. Well, then so, you, yeah. So you you've got that condition. Yes. Okay. Everyone, clear on that condition. Okay. Did you have anything else, Bill? No. Okay. Mike? I'm all set. Okay. Yeah. So we have the conditions as discussed, and we have a motion to approve uh, and second with those conditions as noted. Um, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. You're all set. Thank you very much. Check the code. <coughs> Nice to see you, Kevin. You too. There you go, Kevin. I okay. Yeah, naturally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just, it was one thing I didn't point out to Okay. Before, okay. But no, I knew that. Okay. But if it's getting around to that time, just. Mm -hmm. Right, you can get, get a, a are, we, are we finished? Yeah. I just I was reading the no, I'll just check and see if Miriam has anything else. Anything else? Nothing Any else. citizen communication? Citizen comment? Uh, very nice meeting. Any other discussion? For a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.